back again to talk about one of my favorite books, and it's one of many people's favorite books, um, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahamsa Yogananda, <laughs> the Prem Avatar, the Incarnation of Divine Love. Um, this book, as I was saying in my last video, which was uh, like a book review, um, this book has been highly influential. It, it actually influenced many people in the West to get into yoga in the first place. Um, if it's, if it's largely made up, then, <laughs> then many of us, um, were fooled into, um, into getting into yoga. <laughs> Not only because, you know, my own story was I actually had met these great women gurus, such as Amachi, um, prior to, uh, pick, you know, reading Autobiography of Yogi. And it just really confirmed for me what I was already experiencing with these great teachers. So for me, it, it, you know, whether I um, believed it all or not did not hinge on me reading this book. But I was thinking a lot when I first got into, in, into yoga and in, it got exposed to basically Hinduism, which is really Sanatana Dharma is the original name. Sanatana Dharma means eternal way or eternal religion or eternal righteousness. Um, that's the original name for, for what we now know, call Hinduism. But I, I, I would often think, you know, what is keeping me going here? Because I, I, you know, the, it's still, uh, so much of this is based on faith. And I would actually look at Amachi, the, the hugging saint, Mata Amritananda Mai. Uh, I met her in 1996 in New York City. And I was, I was really blown away by, by what she and her group were doing. And essentially what Amachi I don't know if she's still doing it, but I, I assume she is. Um, she would basically spend all day long hugging people. And, and meanwhile, the music, you know, her, her devotees would be, be playing music all day long. And, and people standing in line by the thousands or sitting in line by the thousands to get a hug. And the hug was only maybe 30 seconds at most. Um, and imagine doing that basically every day of your life, <laughs> not getting a lot of sleep, not getting much to eat, just being solely there to comfort and to bring spiritual solace and inspiration to people. That, that it seems to be Amachi's entire life right there. So that to me was, was a great um, indication that there's something there, you know. And now, has Amachi uh, escaped criticism? Has Amachi escaped people um, putting her down in whatever way? They, you know, the story is that even one of her closest disciples, wo a woman from Australia that was working close by her side for many years, wrote an expose of of her movement. <laughs> she, she got out of it and then she wrote an expose. Now, that doesn't mean Amachi is still not great. People think that she's an um, avatar. Uh, I'm just bringing that up. Let's leave that aside. That, that's another talk for another day. Let's go back though to what the aims and ideals. I mentioned this in my last talk. One of the aims and ideals of Self-Realization Fellowship is to reveal the complete harmony and basic oneness of original Christianity as taught by Jesus Christ and original yoga as taught by Bhagavan Krishna, and to show that these principles of truth are the common scientific foundation of all true religions. One more time to reveal the complete harmony and basic oneness of original Christianity as taught by Jesus Christ and original yoga as taught by Bhagavan Krishna, and to show that these principles of truth are the common scientific foundation of all true religions. Okay, 
to show the basic harmony and oneness of the of the original Christianity as taught by Jesus and and the original yoga as taught by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, which is essentially the Hindu Bible, you know, it's it's like the New Testament of of India, read by millions and millions of people to this day. And also, you know, in the West, you most teacher trainings have you read Bhagavad Gita or at least be aware of it. It's a classic of world literature. Um, it is a dialogue between Krishna, who is considered to be an avatar of Vishnu, meaning an incarnation, just like Jesus is um, supposed to be an incarnation of God. You could say Yahweh <laughs> or Adonai, however you refer Hashem. Um, so, so Krishna is, a, is an avatar or incarnation, divine incarnation of Vishnu. By the way, the movie Avatar, you know, the people are blue. And if you look at depictions of Krishna, he's, he's, he's usually depicted as being blue or blue black. Um, so let's talk about this for a moment. First of all, <clears throat> there are great debates happening um, in the world of, of uh, biblical studies. And one of the great debates, one of the fascinating debates is, and it's becoming more and more of a topic. If you look on YouTube and if you just, you know, I've been following certain certain podcasts. I've been following um, Dr. Bert, Bart Ehrman and some other people, Myth, the Myth Vision podcast. And um, uh, I've been noting that this idea which is called the, the Jesus myth theory has, has been gaining ground in, in, in recent uh, years. Um, it's now an accepted theory in the scholarly world that, that it, it is possible that Jesus never actually lived. That's one possibility and that it's, it's com a complete myth Okay, so that's one possibility. Then the, the other possibility, which seems perhaps to be a little bit more, for, for many people, a little bit more possible, is that there was this guy, Jesus. He was crucified by the Romans. He was, um, you know, a, a prophet or, or maybe even a Messiah figure. Um, but... The story still was largely made up. Someone made up this story, this whole mythology around this this individual. So he did live. Is you know this is one one possibility, one theory. But the but the the gospel accounts and the and the writings that that were that made up around him were largely fictional. Now I think that there's a lot to be said for these ideas. I, I'm not gonna. I'm going to just put, put it on the table. I think there's a lot to be said for the idea that, that Jesus um, either did not exist and, there, and, the, and the whole thing was made up, um, not out of someone's butt, actually, but more, you know, there was some kind of divine inspiration behind it. Um, and, the, and it's probably... I don't want to say probably, but it's it seems a little bit more reasonable to think that there actually was a person named Jesus, but he didn't necessarily do everything that is talked about in the Gospels. Not not that he couldn't, you know. Not, not I mean, if you go by Yogananda's book, look at how many miracles we we talked about. How there's a miracle on every page, <laughs> basically, in his book. That's an exaggeration, but but. Um, so it's not for the for for us who are not maybe all the way there with all this we can't see it from where we're at you know we can't see that these miracles are po are possible and maybe they really are though but we just are not ready to see them yet that's one possibility and you can't deny that i mean anyone that that denies that that is a possibility i think 
is is biased and i think you have to you have to take you know remove your own bias to, to really be objective about all this and i so i would say you know i have not personally experienced these kinds of amazing miraculous things i've i have experienced some some very interesting things um definitely bordering on the miraculous or 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 even i would say miraculous so i what i was saying in my last talk about this is it's very possible very very possible i i was let me say this i was in the temple when my teacher was producing this um red vermilion it's called kumkum in india she was she was kumkum was coming out of her feet and everyone in the front front rows of the temple start, got up and they and they were like, oh my God, this is happening. And I so I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it happening. Um, even if I had seen it happening, would I have believed it? You know, could have been a trick. It could have been some kind of, you know, magic trick. <laughs> Who knows? You know, I think it's it's important to be skeptical. It's, it's, it's important to remain skeptical, but also to grant that it is indeed possible. Here's another thing from the from the book of Exodus, where where Jesus, uh, sorry, where Moses, through the power of God, he turns the staff into a snake, right? And then, and then the Pharaoh, and this is in front of the Pharaoh, and and then the Pharaoh's magicians or sorcerers do the same thing with their with their staffs, but then the but then Moses' snake staff swallows up all the other snakes so that so the the point of the story is to to say that moses was actually working with the true power of god whereas what the egyptian sorcerers were doing was magic um so it could could be you know that the, the these miracles really happen you know babaji in the <laughs> it's a great story in in autobiography of yogi where this guy um is looking for babaji and he finally finds him, finds him, finally finds him. And, and he, he, he pleads with Bob, Babaji to let him become his disciple. And, and he says, if you don't let me become your disciple, I'm going to jump off this cliff right now. And Babaji says to him, go ahead and jump. You're not ready yet. And the guy immediately jumps. He doesn't wait a second. He immediately jumps. <laughs> and, and then... Babaji's disciples, I think, are like, and then actually, Babaji just says, "Okay, go go get his body," and then he re he resurrects the guy, and he says, "Okay, now you've passed your test, you've passed that final test, and now you're ready to be my my my, my disciple." And the point is, is if the guy had had waited a second longer before he jumped, he immediately jumped. Babaji said, okay, go ahead and jump. <laughs> he immediately jumped. He didn't wait a second. And so that was um, a test of his faith. Anyway, there's these, these incredible stories, right? Resurrecting people, he, miraculous healings, levitations, um, uh, bilocation, astral projection, um, Sri Yukteswar materializing from the ethers after he died to, to tell Yogananda all about the, the astral and the causal planes and, and what happens after death. It's all, you know, like mind blowing if, if it's true. You know, that, that's the thing is that we don't know. Is it true? Is it not true? Um, where was I going with that? I don't know where I was going with that. Um, yeah, Jesus also in the Gospels. Here's where I was going with that. Jesus also in the Gospels is said to have worked all these miracles. Did it really happen? You know, if Jesus existed, let's grant that he did. Maybe he did work these miracles. You know, maybe there is, maybe the Gospels got some things right 
maybe there was embellishment, maybe there was distortion of what he was teaching. Now, Yogananda seems to suggest that something got lost. When he says the original Christianity as taught by Jesus Christ, I would like to know what Yogananda thought about the Gospels. I'm not sure if he, that's a very touchy subject, and I'm not sure if he actually talked about that. Um, but, but many people today would say, scholars today would say that it could be that the Gospels, there was some divine inspiration behind the whole thing. But the, it seems to be the work of humans. It's not necessarily literal, uh, word for word truth. Um, we can go into that whole subject, but, but that seems to be the, the, the basic understanding is that, um, you know, as that, as that old song goes, it ain't necessarily so. <laughs> the things that you're liable to read in the Bible, it, it ain't necessarily so. Um, that's why it's good to be, to read critically and, and think and use your own noggin and your own reason and your own discernment, discrimination with all of this stuff. So um, I'm going to bring in one other thing, which, well, let me just say this. So, so somewhere online, I was just reading Yogananda talks, someone asked him, what is true Christianity? And he said, that Jesus said in the Gospels, we'd have to find the verse or the, the verses. He said, you can become like I am. You are also the sons of God. You can become like I am. I am not the only son of God. We are all equally sons of God. Um, and it would not make sense to try to be like me unless you could be me, like me, <laughs> right? Why would, you know, it's not like I am way up here and you could never attain that. But you can if you take the steps, if you do the practice, if you do the work, have faith, you will also reach where I am and understand and see as I see. And you will be as I am as well. And that's self-realization. That's what that's what Yogananda calls self-realization. And and he, from my understanding, he would essentially equate the level that Krishna was at with 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 the level that Christ, Jesus Christ was at. That they they both attain to that same high level. Let me bring in one other thing. Course in Miracles, also one of my favorite. And, and I actually have a whole um, uh, series right now where I'm reading a, a Course in Miracles, the text of A Course in Miracles. This is a uh, fascinating modern day scripture that came through a woman, Helen Shookman, back in the 60s, mid 60s. And she claims that she was receiving an inner voice dictation from Jesus, none other than Jesus. Um, and in this, it does, Jesus does seem to suggest that he, he did live, but his message was not fully understood. And so he's giving a deeper understanding in this, in this modern day scripture, Course in Miracles. And it's basically that idea too, which is that Jesus is not the only son of God. We are all equally sons of God and we can all, we can all uh, reach the height of spirituality, which would be self-realization, or you could say God-realization. Realizing your inherent unity with God, with, or, or, you know, the Hindus would say Brahman. Um, I and my father are one, right? R realizing that great truth. I and my father are one. Um, for Yogananda, it was through the practice of Kriya Yoga, which he believed or he knew. I don't want to say believed because he, he understood that Kriya Yoga originally came from uh, Krishna and through Christ, Babaji, Lahiri Mahashaya, Sri Yukteswar, then Yogananda. Um, and you can ask 
were any of Yogananda's direct disciples self-realized? That's, that's a great question to ask. Um, by their fruits you shall know them. <laughs> um, was, was Kriyananda self-realized? Maybe he was. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not here to say that. I'm, I'm really just here to, to, raise, to bring up the discussion and to talk about um, something that is truly fascinating to me and, and, and which I'm basically devoting my life to, which is, which is this very question of, of um, what, was, wh what was Christ really his true message if, if, if that really, <laughs> if he actually lived? And, I, and the thing about A Course in Miracles, which I, I, I do want to point out, and also you could say, you can make this point about Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita, and also the New Testament, which is these messages do not hinge on whether these were historical personages, whether, whether Krishna really lived or whether Jesus really lived. Because... It's all about the teachings themselves, the message and the, and the practices themselves, not the teacher. And I think that's where we can, we can maybe get off, off track a little bit. Obviously, having the teacher, that, that's inspiring to, to have the human divine teacher come and say, yes, here, you can be like, you can a achieve this understanding just like me. That's very powerful, but in the end, it they it might be what 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 has been called a pious fiction, you know, could be a pious fiction. Um, but it still could be true, even if it is made up. It still could be true, right? Obviously, spirituality does work for many people. You know, it 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 helps to to. Um, feel more peace, more joy, more love, and, and have more kindness for others and, and for oneself. So, um, I, you know, this, this video is just another um, kind of like opening to, for discussion. And I hope you, you, you found it a little bit interesting and helpful, at least. And I would love any um, comments or, or suggestions or, or questions, anything you want to share. Um, I'm also going to continue to look and see what Yogananda said, what else he said about Christianity and its relation to Hinduism. But let's just point out, you know, there's, there's, there's 10 avatars of Vishnu, according to Hindu tradition. Um, a few of them or two of them in particular are well-known, Rama and Krishna. Some, uh, sometimes the list includes Buddha, which is interesting. And sometimes, as far as I'm aware, the, the list includes Jesus as well. If I'm not mistaken, that Jesus is, is also considered to be an avatar of Vishnu. I'm not sure if Yogananda talked about that, but, but I, wanna, I would like to see something about that. Um... The other thing that I want to bring up about Hinduism is the openness to that idea of there can be more than one avatar. In, in traditional, you could say fundamentalist Christianity, it's only Jesus. You know, Jesus is the only, only begotten Son of God um, in whom God was well pleased and in whom God sent, who God sent to, to, to save humanity, to take on the sins of the world. And... Whereas um, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, whenever Dharma diminishes, I come, I take on a body and I come and in order to restore Dharma. Dor dharma meaning true religion, true spirituality. And that means in any generation where th there, there may be a need for an avatar like Krishna or like Jesus, but Jesus was not the only one, you know. Obviously, Hindus b believe that Krishna was, and and these days, but people believe that Amachi, the hugging saint, is, and 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 some people thought that Sai Baba was, and 
And there's all these different gurus, some of which have been con considered to be avatars. So anyway, I will stop talking now and we'll um, continue this discussion another time. Thank you so much for listening. Jai.